Hi, I'm Kelly Collins, and welcome to Health and Wellness, a web magazine about healthcare here in the greater Philadelphia area. Each episode of Health and Wellness will bring you informative and entertaining stories about the doctors, the hospitals, the researchers, and the support groups throughout the region. We will also be featuring segments on healthier eating, exercising smarter, and living a healthier lifestyle. We are excited to bring you this series, so welcome, and let's get started. Health and Wellness's Karima Williams recently visited the CPAP store. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, thank you, Kelly. Recently, I caught up with Chris Foster. He's the owner of the CPAP store in West Berlin, and he gave me more insight onto the disease and how it's properly treated. Let's hear what he had to say. My guest is Chris, the owner of the CPAP shop here in West Berlin, New Jersey. And today, we're here to talk about the chronic sleeping disorder, sleep apnea. Chris, thank you so much for having us. Thanks for being here. Yep. So uh, sleep apnea can occur or does occur when the upper airway collapses or soft tissue in the back of the throat or nose uh, collapses when they're asleep. And this can happen uh, five to 100 times during an hour, uh, over 10 seconds and even longer. Um, some very, very common in men, although it's in women also, but more common in men. Um, some things that you want to look out for that can uh, to wonder if you have sleep apnea would be if you're you know, obviously snoring, that's a, that's a condition. Um, if you don't have anyone there with you that hears you snoring during the night, if you lose concentration during the day, um, dizziness, uh, your, your reaction time isn't as good, you're sleeping during the day, headaches, um, you know, overweight stress, okay. it's also a, 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 in your family history, hereditary. Okay, so how might it be diagnosed? Well, you, want to seek your uh, family doctor first, let your doctor know I'm, I'm, I'm feeling tired during the day, I don't know what's wrong, or my wife or my husband is saying I'm snoring, um, you know, my, my reaction time, my reflexes are slow, I'm just not feeling myself, you want to talk to your doctor, uh, your doctor will then probably refer you to a sleep lab or a respiratory therapist, an ear, nose, and throat doctor, they can see, uh, you'll know, stay overnight or two nights for a sleep study. Okay. Where they will make sure and properly diagnose is this is this sleep apnea um, running through several tests. Okay. Now on your website, I was just browsing a few days ago, and especially looking around in your in your shop, you have different head gears and breathing aids. So can you tell us how exactly sure. a full mask may differ from a nasal mask? Sure. There's basically three different types of masks. There's a nasal mask, which I'll show you in a moment, that just covers the nose. Okay. There's a full face mask that will cover the nose and the mouth. And then there's a nasal pillow mask, which just goes in the nose. Okay. The most, the most common type would be a nasal mask. This is the headgear that holds it on. Okay. There's a, would be a six foot CPAP tube, corrugated tube that would connect to the end of this that would then connect to your CPAP machine. Okay. So that's where the pressure is coming in through the elbow assembly. Your nose is going over this area here. Pressure goes into the nose. You'll keep your mouth closed at night. Mm -hmm. And then that allows the pressure to build up and keep your airway open. You we'll need a full face mask. If you have jaw drop, you cannot keep your mouth closed. If you've ever had a deviated septum, bro broken nose, you just can't breathe through your nose that well. This would be a full face mask. So it's sort of like the nasal, it just stretches out even further to also cover the mouth. Okay. So this would be great. A lot of people that have sinus issues that have a stuffed up nose a lot during the year and just need to be able to breathe through their mouth, this would be the solution for that. Then the third, would be a nasal pillow mask. Okay. So this is becoming more and more popular with people because it gives you a clear field of vision. There's not a lot of plastic to this. If you travel a lot, you can just throw it right in your luggage. It's not going to break. So this is more travel ready. More travel ready, very, very lightweight, no plastic pieces, fewer parts, easy to clean. And being an owner here, have you seen an increase in patient treatments or have it decreased throughout the years? I think it's becoming much more um, People are much more aware of it now. There's probably over 18 million people that have sleep apnea right now, probably millions more that um, are not even diagnosed or, or misdiagnosed. Um, but we talk to a lot of people, especially uh, you know, men that are in their you know late 50s, early 60s, that say, you know, this saved my life, and we all made fun of my father because he snored so loudly right. when we were kids, and, and he died 
before he should have, and now we realize he probably had sleep apnea. Recently, I had the pleasure of visiting one of the major funding organizations for healthcare and social services in Pennsylvania, headquartered in Phoenixville. I'm here with Lou Beccaria, who is the CEO of the Phoenixville Community Health Foundation, and his partner, Lynn Hartman, who is the vice president of their programs here. One of the things we just do on a routine basis here at the foundation is we identify a problem, like transportation. Um, generally, what we do is we gather people around the table. We all talk about the problem. We kind of pick it apart, pick each other's brains, brainstorm, and um, think of possible solutions to how are we going to address this problem. And that's exactly what Ride for Health, how Rally for Health came about through uh, transportation management um, organization, TMAC here in Chester County, um, organizations that have uh, clients and patients who are in cannot get to them because of transportation issues. Um, the Potsdam Cab Company, uh, Lou and I here at the foundation, and we, we put together a program that utilizes all of these partners in order to help people get where they need to be. Case in point, uh, one of our partner agencies is Healthy Start. They work with uh, pregnant women. And um, sometimes a woman is having a problem pregnancy and she needs to go to Westchester to a specialist. For her to get a bus here in Phoenixville and take the bus to Westchester, you're talking probably three, four hours. Now she might be uh, seven, eight, nine months pregnant, obviously having a difficult time with her pregnancy. She might have a little one in tow. How is she going to do that? So now with the ride for help, you know, Healthy Start lines up a cab ride for her, the cab picks her up, and her little one takes her to Westchester for her doctor's appointment, waits for her, and brings her back home. So that's, that's just how we build solutions to problems here. Of all the things that we do here, which are obviously many, the one overriding thing that we always strive for, and it's in our long-term goal, is to make sure that nobody in the 19 townships and boroughs that we serve ever goes without health care. Okay. So through the grant making that we do, to the various organizations that Linus mentioned, through the Ride for Health program, through the uh, Health Care Access program, uh, through another very important uh, aspect of health care access, which is our health book. Um, all those things together provide a real good safety net. And uh, we feel that we're well on the way to establishing the fact that nobody in the greater Phoenixville area uh, goes without health care because we've been fortunate to be able to use our resources to be able to build up these programs so that if you don't have health insurance, and, and even with the new Affordable Care Act, there were some people who will still not have health insurance that the safety net is here so that nobody, nobody, no matter how marginal they are uh, in their economic status, will have to be without health care. Well, thank both of you so much for being here, Lou and Lynn, for talking to me about your foundation today. If people do want to find out more about your foundation, where can they get that? Uh, sure. Our website is www.pchf1.org. All right, great. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you. An evolution in orthopedic and spine care is coming soon to Abington Health. Learn more today. Joining me now is Natalia Yabakov, one of our field correspondents. Natalia recently had the opportunity to visit Samaritan Healthcare and Hospice. Can you tell us more about that? Sure, thanks Kelly. I had the pleasure to meet Dr. Stephen Goldfein at Samaritan. We talked about palliative medicine. Why don't we take a look? This is Dr. Stephen Goldfein, Chief Medical Officer of Samaritan Healthcare and Hospice. Good morning. Good to be here. So please explain to us the specialty of palliative medicine. Palliative medicine is actually a newer specialty. It's been around for about five to ten years. And basically, we focus on a couple of things. One is symptom management. 
The other is uh, goals of care and communication. So for example, when a patient is diagnosed with a uh, serious life-threatening illness, for example, cancer, heart disease, uh, lung disease, we get involved hopefully early in the case to help that patient work through that disease process. Uh, it's a long process, and what happens in the beginning, we focus on making sure the patients get the care that they want and that they need. Uh, we work on uh, things like sometimes getting cancer with treatment. How do you manage this, the pain and the shortness of breath and the nausea and vomiting to keep them in that treatment? Mm -hmm. As that disease progresses, a couple, couple things can happen. One is they can get better, which we're always hopeful for. Two is they can stay the same. And three is they can get worse. When they tend to decline, we're there to help support that decline, and make sure we're setting goals that are appropriate for that patient. Uh, and finally, at the end of palliative care, we have something called hospice care, which is the very end of their lives, and support them through that care. What about some of the services that Samaritan provides for the patient and for the families? Basic um, care is really hospice care. Uh, we provide most of our care in the patient's homes, but we're very proud of our inpatient unit, which is in Mount Holly. This is a very specialized unit that takes care of the sickest of the six, patients that cannot be cared in other environments. They get a lot of aggressive treatments, a lot of medications. Uh, they get aggressive social support, aggressive spiritual support. We have a chaplain and a social worker on staff um, that are there every single day. Mm -hmm. The nurses cover 24-7, uh, and those patients get really uh, intensive care at the very end of their lives. The other thing we've realized is that um, because of the continuum of care, we need to move further up in the continuum. So we're not just at the very end of life, but actually as disease uh, progresses. So that's where our palliative medical partners uh, has developed and has become really one of the leading specialty groups in this area. We have four board certified family physicians or physicians. We have two nurse practitioners and a fellow. Uh, we really are the only group in South Jersey that is providing palliative care and medicine in multiple environments, including an office over in Voorhees and Mount Holly, uh, at outpatient visits at, in the home, as well as hospital visits. Uh, so we're very excited about that development. That really has helped get the message of palliative care to the Southern South Jersey community. Uh, the level of service that we provide, including things like uh, Jewish hospice, Catholic hospice, uh, we're very proud that we are now designated as a four-star uh, in veterans care uh, to provide care to our, our the folks that have served our country uh, that deserve the best care possibly. Uh, I think the depth and breadth of the services within Samaritan are unmatched in the community. Uh, and that makes me very proud to be the Chief Medical Officer uh, as well as work for Samaritan. I, our staff, I can't tell you how dedicated they actually are. We just had a, uh, a, a winter fest, which is a, a gathering. To see our staff that have worked there for 20 years, 15 years, uh, the dedication is unbelievable. And I think that at the end of the day, we really focus on quality outcomes uh, and having that patient experience a uh, very high level of service a very difficult time in their life. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. thank you. Thank you to all of our guests, and thank you for joining us on this episode of Health and Wellness. For more information, you can visit www.healthwellnessweb.com. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter, and we'll see you next time.